Hey guys, it's time for Trek Yards Fact Files, where we take a piece of tech from Trek and break it down in five minutes or less. Think of this as bite-sized Trek Yards that get straight to the point about things that probably don't have enough information for a full episode. Today's Fact File is on the Hypospray. So let's get started. A Hypospray, which is also referred to as a hypo, is a medical device designed to inject liquid medications into a human or alien life forms. The Hypospray could deliver medication either subcutaneously, just under the skin, or intravenously, directly into the artery without damaging the skin of the patient. It converted medications into a high pressure microscopic aerosuspension stream that could penetrate both clothing and epidermis as needed. It was generally applied to the base of the neck, directly into the carotid artery or upper arm. Since no damage was caused to the skin, there was little or no risk of infection at the injection site. Another advantage was the ability to use it on numerous patients in rapid succession without fear of spreading any blood borne in illnesses. The concept of the hyperspray was developed when producers on the original Star Trek discovered that NBC's broadcast standards and practices prohibited the use of hyperdermic syringes to inject medication on screen. Needless to say, the hyperspray sidestepped this issue effortlessly while adding to the show's futuristic tone. A real-life jet injector was conceived of in the mid-1950s and put into actual use as early as 1962, so four years before Star Trek's debut in 1966. In the script for the early episode Where No Man Has Gone Before, they were commonly referred to as hyperguns. Dr. McCoy's original design was a two-handed affair, which had a polished aluminum body, which featured two telescoping tubes, a complex-looking tip, and supported a swappable ampule of medicine in its base. The original TOS prop was actually a modified fuel injector for a large automotive diesel engine. The TNG version was designed by Rick Sternbuck in June of 1987 for the first series of TNG and was much smaller than Dr. McCoy's version and could be used with only one hand. Its design was inspired by a then contemporary commercial inhaler used primarily by asthma sufferers. Both designs used interchangeable vials of medication that could easily and quickly be swapped out and attached to the end of the device. The device could deliver substances in various spray patterns ranging from pinpoint to wide dispersal to aid in quick distribution throughout the body. It could also administer medications of varying viscosities, and the emergency away mission field unit was in fact preloaded with five concentrated drug vials that could be mixed with an inert saline carrier solution. Although early versions used contemporary gases to administer the medication, later models instead of using pressurized mediums like chlorofluorocarbons would propel the liquid payload using only the vibrations of a high frequency piezoelectric element, just like the wafer thin speakers in many popular gadgets today. Later versions also were packed with sensor circuitry and isolinear computer elements that could detect and target optimum entry points, compute dosages based on the patient's physiological parameters, keep a transmittable user log, communicate with the ship's computer and medical database, and configure a drug's molecular formula on the fly. The device could recharge its own power cell and perform all necessary internal diagnostics when it was placed in its base unit. An early design, also done by Rick, that was eventually abandoned and never seen was a hyperspray that could in fact extract samples from patients for study and analysis. And lastly, a fun fact, a design patent was indeed issued by the US Patent Office and Trademark Office to Rick Sternbach in 1991 for the ornamental design of the prop. Well that's it for this fact file guys. Give that like and subscribe button a click and don't forget to head on over to our Patreon page to help us out. Please check out all of our past episodes on YouTube or over at trekyards.com and if we missed anything that you know about the hyperspray, please share your knowledge in the comments below so that other Star Trek fans can learn about this incredible device. Till next time, this is Captain Foley and Commander Cookins signing off.